everyone and welcome back to Learning with Yagman X. Today I continue with taking you behind the scenes while I create my next music video in Unreal Engine by showing you some pretty embarrassing prototypes and drawings that prove that if I can do it, so can you. Since the last update, I've had my hair cut to look like an icon. It's a little bit long still though, so I probably have to cut it again. But also, I have made some progress on the music video. <sighs> last episode, I was explaining how I wanted to recreate a character reminiscent of what Forbidden Siren did with their characters. How they took photographs of the actors and had it like projected onto their faces. So concept artist Braden May created us a low poly character model to use which was based upon the reference of Metal Gear Solid's character typology. Once we had this we then took photographs of two different facial expressions. So nothing fancy we literally just took the photos on my white wall and then Braden used used these pictures to create a texture um, using the UV unwrapping of the head from that low poly 3D model he had already created. What's really important about prototyping very quickly is that you learn what you did wrong and what you need to do next time. So we've learned that taking pictures of my face works, but my hair, a little bit crazy, we should just model that and put it on top of the head. So we're going to just scrape my hair back when we take the next photos and also we need to have the lighting be consistent so we need to make sure there are no shadows on my face at all so I can have complete control over the lighting in Unreal Engine itself. Also Braden has realized that um, mirroring the face, although it seemed like a really good way uh, to save some time, wasn't actually the best way to create the textures because it doesn't look like my face. No one's face is perfectly mirrored. I remember there was like a TikTok trend I think where people were mirroring their faces and most people just looked very strange. I look strange if my face is mirrored. So we're not going to do that when we create the proper facial expressions. But for now it works pretty well. So when the modeling and texturing part was done, I could then use the low poly character model and create a rig for it by actually just plopping it into Mixamo because Mixamo will create its own rig and I also exported some standard animations from Mixamo as well just to test out animating this character. Then once I had downloaded the animations and skeleton from Mixamo, I could use the same skeleton for each animation that I had downloaded in Unreal Engine. All I had to do was replace the model and the animations that I was already using in my prototype from last video with the new assets that I had. So to create the facial expressions I needed to create a sprite sheet of these that could be used for the flipbook in Unreal Engine so it will automatically flip through all the facial expressions even though I'm only using two at the moment. So I put them into Photoshop and I used this image to sprite, I think it's called, um, script that you can download and then use in Photoshop. And once I have my sprite shoot, I can then put that into Unreal Engine and use that in my material that I'd already set up with a flipbook that just flips through all of the sprites from the first one to the last one. However, I realized I wasn't getting the small crossfade that I noticed when looking at Forbidden Sirens characters. You see, in between all of their facial expression changes, there was a moment where the images would slightly crossfade over one another. And because mine was just using a flipbook, it was just flipping from one to the next to the next without actually fading over all of the different sprites. I was actually really surprised to see that the flipbook node didn't have any options for this and if you know of any inherent options for crossfading between sprites in a flipbook in Unreal Engine do let me know in the comments. But what I did in the end was actually just set up two flipbooks of the same sprite sheet and have the output material just output a blend of both of these flipbooks and then just have one start slightly earlier than the other. This way there would be a crossfade of 
zero three seconds I think I made it in the end a very very small amount of time when they were out of sync and it would look like they were cross fading around one another. Feels like a cheat but it works and I kind of like it so that's what I'll keep I guess. Now of course you're probably seeing it on screen and it looks super derpy right now um, but I promise you it's gonna look so much better with more expressions I can see it in my head and I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out I've also created a storyboard it's very rough I usually would not share something like this my creative process Whenever I do something like create a storyboard or come up with the initial idea of what I think something should look like and what the meaning of it should be and all of this wishy-washy creative -y stuff is just to sit on the floor, surround myself with notebooks, pens, pencils, my laptop and just submerge myself in whatever I want the creation to entail. So whether that's imagery, uh, video, I watch documentaries or commentaries on things that I find inspiring for the piece that I'm making at the time. And then I have a nap. <laughs> Honestly, this has always worked for me, especially if I come to a roadblock and I don't exactly know where I'm going to go next. I think going to sleep for me shuts off my anxieties. It also shuts off anything that can distract me. And being in that zone in between awake and deep sleep allows me to formulate ideas that I can't do when I'm fully awake. I don't know how to explain it, but nap time is great time. And if you're ever stuck in a rut and you don't exactly know what to do with the creative project you're working on, maybe just try that method. I just Googled this, but it was used by Thomas Edison, Salvador Dali and Albert Einstein to get their creative juices flowing and to come up with creative ideas around solutions that they couldn't come up with in their waking life. So try the nap method, it works. I think one of them, I don't know who, but they would sleep with um, heavy objects in their hands. So before they reached a deep sleep, they would wake up because they would drop the heavy object and then start writing down whatever they're thinking of. I've just trained myself to wake up after 20 minutes by setting an alarm and that took maybe about a year. But the heavy object might work. I don't just don't hurt anyone and don't hurt your toes. Um, but yeah. So are you ready to see the storyboard? Oh, it's gonna be so good. Ta-da! Yeah, it's not that good. <laughs> my terrible drawings are for me and meant for only me. It's kind of just my rambles about what environments I need, what kind of shots I'm thinking about, and what the overall narrative language is that I'm going for. When I talk about narrative language, I'm talking, is it first person, is it third person? If I'm using third person shots, am I ever using kind of POV shots from something else that could signify the monster, because I'm doing a spooky horror uh, music video, as well as the ambience, the environments, what's going to be happening, and what I need from my concept artist to actually create these environments in Unreal Engine. There is kind of a time frame of where I think the shots should be placed within the song itself. However, it's very rough, it's not final, and I try not to spend too much time on this because I know it's gonna change. But yeah, usually I would not be sharing anything like this, but I guess this is what this whole series is for, right? It's for showing you everything from start to finish, and that includes the really embarrassing things. So you're welcome. And from this, I was then able to add all of the locations that I want, all of the props that I want, onto the Google Doc that I shared with you last episode. So it's more fleshed out now, and I can share that with Brayden, and we can talk about which props Brayden would like to create, and which props I can look online to buy. For the environments, I wanna use a block of flats, that has an atrium in it and also has a bunch of corridors with various flat doors and I'd also like a winding staircase. I feel like a poodle whenever I get my hair cut, it's just crazy. The next steps are now for Brayden to start creating the environment. What he'll do is he'll create it in little parts so that I can then have elements of it to create as if I were a level designer. So for instance, instead of doing the whole corridor or something, he'll just make one wall that then I can use whenever I want so I can figure out the layout of the corridors that I want. And he'll make one door, one window. 
you get what I'm saying here, and then I can just play with it all in the environment and create a block out, because that's another next step that I will need to do. I'll need to block out all the environments in Unreal Engine, and then this will help me to position my cameras. I can follow my storyboard that I have already written out, but I can also create kind of another storyboard, but within Unreal Engine itself, so I can actually see what it looks like in the cameras. And by blocking it out, even if we don't have the final assets yet, especially with the final character, because we're going to have to start from scratch with the character again, we can use the model, maybe just change it a little bit, but especially with the, the faces, we're gonna have to start from scratch taking images of those. We can just add that in later when I have all of my characters and my environments blocked out. I also know what I want the ambience and the weather to be like in the music video, and that is stormy. I want there to be rain, I want there to be lightning, thunder, so I actually need to figure out how to do that in a retro style as well. I don't have that as part of my retro graphics pack so that'll be quite interesting and I'll I'll need to look into that okay so there you go that is my next steps that I have to go I always feel like I haven't done enough um, but it's time for me to make another update so hopefully that was enough to be somewhat interesting for you these things take time and there's always more things to do that I did not realize I had to do at the beginning so this will be interesting we'll see how we get on but I think at the moment I am where I expected to be I finished my storyboard I know what I want to do in Unreal Engine I figured out how to do the technical parts Apart from rain, because now I need to figure out how to do rain. But I'm sure that will be fine. And if you want to learn how to create music videos, short films, or of course games in Unreal Engine, my friends over at gamedev.tv have courses for you to learn just that. So check them out in the link down below, and it will be an affiliate link, so you can help out me and my channel as well. And a massive thank you to my Patreons who make this all a reality. I know I've been trying to give you a bit more behind the scenes lately so I hope you've been enjoying that because I am really really grateful to every single one of you. And if you want to support the channel the Patreon link will also be in the description down below where you can get access to early videos as well as more behind the scenes content and uh, some music as well if you want to see more of that. Don't forget if you want to see more of me as well you can catch me on twitch.tv slash yagmanx. I'm usually streaming every week or so. I am getting so distracted by my fringe. I need to go. I probably need to cut it myself. Thank you so much for putting up with me in my gigantic fringe this evening, morning, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. And have a lovely day or evening. Goodbye.